From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Robcast, the lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ropecast, our podcast about everything to do with English and learning it. Hello, dear listeners. Hi. Hello, Roger. Hi, Peter. How are you? Well, I'm still kind of pooped, though, from the, this, this really complicated talk we had about prepositions. Hmm. Uh, got my head spinning at yeah. the end, <laughs> with all the in, out. And, oh, yeah, we had uh, fill in a form, fill out a form. Did we have that? Yeah. Fill in a form, fill out a form. What's the difference? Where Let me think. British? Yeah, I would fill out a form, actually. Right. and I say fill in a form. You would fill in a form. Yeah. And you, you, you said, I think this is very interesting, where I see it as a container. Yeah, right, you said in, that. Right. You said out is completion. Yes. And maybe it's also a layout type of thing. I think they don't have boxes very often on the forms in the no. United States. They have lines, so you okay. don't have a box to fill in. But strictly speaking, you know, yeah. these, these are not prepositions. Fill in, fill out. This is... These are called phrasal verbs. Mm-hmm. Well, they look like prepositions. It's something that's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't those, want to get technical. Yeah, those are just in basically, case. Basically, yes, yes. Just in case any grammarians are listening. To <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Well, you can always send us an email actually uh, at www.ropecast.de if you're not happy with what we're saying or if you want to ask a question, folks. Okay, back to prepositions. Um, or here, particles. And particles of phrasal verbs, which yeah. are sort of, you know... I, I looked into this, Peter, yeah. because this uh, fill out a form I was familiar with. I mean, everyone, I think, knows that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out in the sense of completion. Mm-hmm. I think this, this there are far more examples in American English than British English mm-hmm. that, that go along with it. For example, um, to do with plants and animals, I found things like the plant buds out or pods out Mm -hmm. these are very strange to me i've never come across them in british english yeah well i'm not very much into planting and everything but uh i have heard them yes yeah or sometimes there's a very negative connotation like uh, in congress uh, a bill was talked out so it doesn't if you sort of talk so much it's you know, like a filibuster. Yeah, you, right. You run out of time. Right, and yeah. you basically you postpone decisions yeah. that way. <laughs> or you apparently Americans say I'm all played out. Which yeah, that means I'm, you've played every card. Yeah, in a way, yeah. you know, so you don't have a solution. There's nothing left. Um, you have a positive one though as well, which you know it's British English. This worked out. Oh yes, yeah. So you have a sense of completion what if, here. What about if a person said I'm all worked out? Then he's. Pooped. Yes. <laughs> then he See, is, that, you that, know... That's what we don't have in British English. Uh-huh. I think I think for our listeners, this is part of the problem. Yeah. When we get into phrasal verbs, there are quite a lot that exist in American English, not in British, and mm-hmm. sometimes vice versa. Right. Uh, I, I can't even sometimes tell what's really, you know, universal yeah. and what would be very American and what would be very British. There's, a, there's another one that su- suggests completion, and that is up... Uh-huh. Um, sometimes it's very familiar to me as well, like fill up the tank or just right. you know, someone goes to the filling station and says, uh-huh. fill it up or fill her up. Since we talked about work, you can work up an appetite. <laughs> right. Did you know that one? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's your, your, your belly is completely mm. empty. <laughs> but what we don't have in British English or hardly at all is things like when, when there's damage involved, bang up, scar up, chip up. Oh, the, yeah. The, the car is all banged up. Yeah, yeah sure. I you don't, don't know that? You, do, British, you don't have that? British people don't use these. Uh-huh. Okay. Or um, to, I came across to police up. That's also kind of completive, completive sense as well. Uh-huh. Or um, containing things, bail up, box up, sack up. Uh, box it up, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So there are lots of these that seem to be used in American English, which mm-hmm. I'm unfamiliar with. Okay. Another one is over. Um, he said it over. I, w- I would say he said it again. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you can actually combine these two. You can say he said it over and over and over again. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I would accept that. But he, he, he said it over. It yeah. doesn't exist for me. You can also do things over. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, I got yeah. that in my homework. When, when I did bad mm-hmm. homework in the United States, oh, you're going to have to do this over. Right. 
Uh, so, so especially many... we had a really tough English teacher who said, you know, if you didn't put the date in the right place, you'd have to do the whole thing over. Yeah. So for our listeners who are trying to learn English, uh -huh. they would probably have to try to make sure they are learning phrasal verbs that are really useful in that particular variety that they want to acquire. Mm -hmm. Whether it's American mm -hmm. English or British, because the British also have some that Americans don't use. I think. I'm if pretty you, sure you if do. If you go into a cafe or a restaurant, you ask for something, and the uh -huh. and the person serving at the table says, "I'm sorry, that's off." No, nope. meaning it's not available. Uh, you know what we'd say in no. the United States? We're out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there are many of these we're differences. Out. Of course, meaning we're out of coffee, but very often we're out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Fortunately for our learners, there are some useful reference books. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know if these things are really in use, then mm -hmm. you can check this for yourself. And we'll we'll have this information on the on the website. Uh, so let's yeah sign out, sign off, wind up for today. <laughs> okay, we'll discuss that when the microphone is off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Bye. Goodbye. been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>